Welcome to an IVS computer technology tutorial. My name is Julie and I'm the education consultant that's going to walk you through today's steps. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a tool for our smart response users, how to create an answer key. Creating an answer key is going to allow you to quickly set the answers for any paper-based assessment. In turn, a summative assessment is going to be generated in notebook from the answer key that you created. This means that your students will be taking a paper-based assessment while also submitting answers with their smart response clickers. Keep in mind that summative assessments are usually student-paced and they don't need to be projected. So the assessment will be running on your computer and you can monitor, but students will be going at their own pace, filling in the hard copy as well as using their student responders. To create an answer key, you're of course going to start in notebook software and you're going to select response in the menu, shown here. Next, you're going to scroll down and select create answer key and the create answer key window will appear. The next step is to name the answer key and then select the type of assessment, whether it's a quiz or exam. After that, you're going to start selecting question types and setting the answer for each question. For a few of the question types, you will have to do one extra step, so I'll be demonstrating these steps for you shortly. Once all your questions are added, select Create, and then Smart Response will generate a title page and a page for each question that you've added. Make sure to save your file. I've opened an untitled response or notebook file here, and I'm going to go ahead and repeat those steps. First, I select response. Third option down is create answer key. Here's the answer key window. I'm going to type in a title. And then over to the right, this is where I can identify the type of assessment. You can choose from assessment, quiz, exam, or test. I will use quiz. And then here is where the list of my questions will appear and the answers. These are the types of questions here that I can choose from. I'm just going to go one by one. Let's say the first one is multiple choice. Notice it's red around the edge showing that that's the type of question I've chosen. I can change the number of question choices here, or the answer choices, excuse me, up to 10. And then this is where I select my answer. If it's opinion, then I would just select opinion here. Once I've selected the answer, notice that it's input that question number and the answer, and then automatically added an additional question. Next, I'm going to select true and false. Again, I set the answer by selecting the correct option. I move on to yes, no, click the answer, multiple answer. This one's a little bit different. This allows my students to plug in more than one answer. Again, I can change the number of choices, up to 10 choices. And then I select all the correct answers. For this particular question, I'm going to pretend that the answers are A and B. And then down below, I have to select Add in order to add it here. Next, you have text questions. If it's an opinion, you can leave this checked and your students will have a certain number of characters allowed for their response depending on whether you have PE clickers or XE. If you have PE clickers, you can type up to 20 characters. For an opinion XE question, you have up to 140 characters. However, if I remove this check mark, then for both the PE and the XE clickers, it must be 20 characters. This is where I'm going to type in my answer choices. If you're going to accept more than one answer, for example, if it's okay that the word is not capitalized, you can also type that choice in. And in this example, I've set two correct choices. You have a choice of setting up to four correct or acceptable answers. Again, as in with multiple answer, you do need to select add to add this to your list of answers. And then last number, fraction or expression. I'm going to type in a numeric answer. Again, you can choose to create an opinion question here. 
If you have Smart Response XE, you'll be able to utilize Intelligent Grading. And then at the very end, make sure again you select Add. Once all of your questions have been added, at the very bottom of this window, you will see a button that says Create. I'm going to select Create now that I'm finished. And then you'll be able to see inside of my notebook file each question. I had six questions. So here are the pages for each question. And then the very first page is a title page. And this is the name that I chose. All of this information can be double clicked and edited. My last step is to select File, Save As. I'm going to save it to my desktop, name it, let's say this is Chapter 1, Lesson 2 Quiz. When I am ready to administer this assessment, I'm going to make sure that I start my class and ask my students to sign in. I'm going to open up that file and start the assessment. I'm going to pass out my paper-based assessment so that my students can fill it out, and they're going to use that hard copy, that paper assessment, as well as their Smart Response clickers to submit their answers. I'm going to use my Smart Response tab to monitor student progress, and then when I'm finished, I'm going to stop that assessment, and I'll be able to view my results in my Teacher Tools gradebook. Thank you for joining us for another IVS tutorial.